you do a fondant inlay, you're embedding two or more pieces of fondant together to create one piece. The goal is to get different shapes and colors into a single layer. There's actually two ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you the fill-in method first. It's the simpler of the two. All right, I'm gonna start with my roller and I have my purple guide rings on. That's gonna help us to roll out the fondant evenly to an eighth of an inch thickness. I'm gonna start with my teal fondant here. I'm just gonna knead it and dust my surface with a little bit of cornstarch. Going to add a little more cornstarch so the fondant doesn't stick to my roller. And now we're ready for our other color. I've got some yellow. I'm just going to knead up the yellow and we're going to use this to use with our smaller cutter and that's what's going to create the inlay in our teal base. Now I'm going to start by taking my larger cutter, this is going to be our base, I'm going to remove our excess fondant here, and then I'm going to take my smaller cutter and in the center I'm going to cut out a star. Now in this case, the star came right out, which worked out great. Sometimes though, when you pull out your cutter, it may not come out, in which case you could actually just take a toothpick and lift out your inlay that way. Next, I'm gonna go back to my yellow fondant and cut out a new star. And I'm going to use this to place right in the footprint of the star that's at our base. So now I'm just going to grab a very small amount of water. You just want your finger to be damp. So I'm using a towel just to get some of that water off. And then I'm going to use my damp finger to kind of go around so now your inlay is ready to set. You're going to want to let it set for about 15 to 30 minutes before you go to transfer it to a treat. Now we're going to do the rolled inlay method. You're making an inlay by gently rolling pieces onto a piece of fondant, which combines into one piece. I'm going to start with the fondant roller having my purple guide rings on. And for the base, we're going to be using white fondant. Just going to knead this a little bit. And now I'm going to just take my paring knife. You could also use a pizza cutter and I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. So we have some straight edges to build our inlay on. And now we're going to add another color into the mix here. So I've got some teal. And you can do more than just stripes. You can create just about any kind of a pattern when you do this inlay method. I'm just going to clean up this one a little bit so it's about the same height as my white. And then I'm going to take a ruler and just get a nice clean edge to start. With a paring knife, you're going to want to do one quick cut. And now we're ready to make our first stripe. A pizza cutter works well too. Okay. And now we're going to incorporate a third color, so I'm actually going to move these off to the side. And then I'm going to do the exact same process with another color. So now I have all of my stripes cut, we're going to come back to the white base. Something I just want to mention is while you're cutting your stripes or whatever pattern you're using, you want to make sure that you're, whatever you're using for the base, you've covered it so it doesn't dry because you want to make sure that the fondant hasn't set yet before you add your pattern pieces. So I'm going to take my first stripe 
and just set it on here vertically. And I'm going to alternate my colors. I want some white to show through, so I'm spacing my stripes out a bit. If you just want the teal and green, place them next to each other so you don't see that white underneath. The white is really just a base to hold the pieces together. And now you can take a piece of wax paper, or I've got a piece of parchment paper here. We're going to set this on top. And using the roller, we're going to lightly go over the top of this to embed our stripes into the white. You don't want to press too hard because then you're going to end up distorting your stripes. And there we go. Now we can take our cutters and we can cut out. We can try a couple small ones. And just the way you position them will give you a different look. You can offset them, just incorporate a variety of color into each one. And I'll pull away the excess so we can see what we have. You can see how they all have a different look. I mean, this one really looks like there's stripes. This one is more of a diagonal look. It just depends on how you offset your cutters. Both the methods that we just did, the fill-in and the rolled inlay, they're both simple to do. You just get different effects. Here's an example of how we've used the inlay technique on a cake. And you can see using the different cutters and different sizes, you can really add a lot of uniqueness to your cake. Thank you.